All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here in front of you today. Uh, I'm Adrian. I'm a senior ops engineer uh, at Decathlon in the Cloud Platform Engineering Business Unit. So as the name suggests, we provide the Cloud Platform product to our internal users. So the idea is to uh, standardize and ease the adoption of uh, uh, cloud solutions for all our IT users. I'm more specifically in the uh, Cloud Native Partners team, uh, which handles everything related to uh, Kubernetes, container orchestration, and serverless components to uh, integrate, integrate them into this platform. And uh, today I will talk to you about Service Mesh. And uh, first I wanted to talk to you about the study we did about Service Mesh last year, but uh, then I changed my mind and I'm gonna uh, talk to you about how we can uh, improve Service Mesh uh, with AI uh, at the edge. Uh, Basically, the idea is to uh, uh, see you, you can uh, connect your, uh, let's say, your uh, connected bike into your service mesh and talk to it when you go to work uh, in order to uh, configure uh, your various uh, service meshes. Ah, it doesn't seem so excited. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I actually talked to you about the study we did uh, about service mesh. Uh, so, basically, uh, this is the conclusion. Uh, service mesh is not a solution. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> feedbacks appreciated. Uh, we are hiring, by the way. Uh, thank you. I saw some up in the eyes of my colleague in the front. They were thinking, uh, yeah, we can go to lunch early, but. Uh, I owe to you to uh, deep dive more on that. So, uh, why is Service Mesh not the best solution? We'll uh, see a bit about that uh, later. First, a few words about Decathlon. So, Decathlon is the world's largest uh, sport good retailer in the world. Uh, we had uh, 15 billion in revenue in 2022, and we have around uh, 5,000 teammates, as we call them, working in the IT overall and digital. Few words about our container journey. So we started with containers quite early. We did our first test with Kubernetes in 2017. We put our first Kubernetes in production uh, in 2019. In 2021, we went uh, full public cloud. So we basically shut down our latest data centers in 2021. That was the end of a long journey that started like in 2016. And now we're in 2024 and in uh, 2023, we did this study about service mesh. So we look uh, at why we did this study. Uh, we look at what were uh, our user needs and who were these uh, users. We'll focus a bit more on service mesh to see how it works, uh, what it does. And then we'll uh, focus again on the, the study itself and these conclusions. So first of all, the context. Uh, before diving into the uh, container context, uh, I want to say a few words about our API management system uh, because it's quite relevant for the next part of the talk. So basically our API management system, it's an uh, API gateway uh, like uh, all of us uh, use. Uh, the idea is to uh, centralize the exposition and the API calls uh, so you can enforce quality and security. Um, the thing to note here is that um, the architecture of our uh, current API gateway is that we use big centralized data plane, big centralized gateways uh, that are, let's say, continental. So we have one big uh, gateway in Europe, one big gateway in Asia, one big gateway in the Americas. And uh, all, basically all the API calls, all our APIs are exposed through these API gateways because it's uh, like the golden rule of the Catherine. If you have an API, it must be exposed through the API management system. And so basically all the API calls go through this gateway, uh, be they, uh, whether they are external or from service to service. So um, what are the current issues with uh, our Kubernetes uh, users? Uh, well, 
as I said, we are using Kubernetes for quite some years now. So we are past the day one and day two issues. And uh, our users are starting to have uh, more issues related to the business. So basically, how to, these issues are linked to costs. Uh, in Decathlon, we have, let's say historically, a lot of uh, small clusters. Um, so this incurs some costs because there are a lot of clusters to manage and uh, well, you have to pay for them. Uh, this is changing, by the way, but still uh, we have a lot of clusters with a couple of services. Uh, the other thing is related to uh, the way we use the API management system. So you can imagine that having this big centralized gateway, this uh, creates some latencies because if you have services, a service that want to talk to another service that is uh, in the same cluster or in a cluster nearby, it has to go uh, out to the, uh, to the gateway and then the gateway will reach the, uh, the other service. So this incurs latencies, of course, but also costs. And for the, 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 tricky, uh, the tricky ones that don't use the uh, API management system, well, they are in a pickle because, well, they don't have uh, a lot of observability because uh, observing network inside Kubernetes, inside vanilla Kubernetes cluster, well, it's quite opaque. So they don't have, they don't benefit from uh, the metrics and such from the API management system. So if we take a step back, we are actually looking at east-west traffic because we are looking at how we can optimize service-to-service -service communication. So, well, east-west traffic. So let's see now um, who were the users that express these this kind of issues. These are the domains that uh, reached out to us and said, yeah, we are having these issues uh, about latencies, about cost. And if you look at them, you can imagine that for the Cathlon, there are not some uh, small group of users in the corner of the Cathlon uh, coding in the dark. These are basically some of our biggest uh, internal users and they represent a large portion of uh, our IT users and they also represent a large portion of the Cathlon revenue. So we really had to address their, uh, their issues and their needs. So we have these users, they have, well, business goals, you know, like everyone, uh, every one of us, the goals linked to uh, how to improve performances, how to solve issues faster, et cetera, how to reduce and improve costs. And we have this context, how to improve service to service communication and east west traffic management. And if you combine this, you can deduce some technical needs on which you can act on to to try to solve the business issues for the users. And well, this, this, need, this technical needs, they are, they are these ones, and multi-cluster, dynamic routing, east-west filtering, and more observability. And if you know a bit the Kubernetes and cloud native ecosystem, you'll think, service mesh, right? This must be the answer. Well, service mesh, not the best solution. But what is service mesh anyway? So service mesh is like uh, an additional network layer, an additional communication layer inside your Kubernetes clusters that sit on top of the other network layer that already exists. So you have your cloud provider network layer, you have uh, your Kubernetes sovereign network, and often some networks in between. And then you add yet another network layer. And how this network layer works is that without service mesh, your pod communicate over the uh, over a network of the, the Kubernetes clusters. And on the com most common implementation of service mesh, all the traffic goes to uh, a sidecar proxy that are deployed uh, inside each pod. So now all the traffic going, going in and out of the pods go through the proxy which is a layer seven proxy. And you, then you can do a lot of things with this uh, layer seven proxy. And you also have the control plane. The control plane uh, pushes configuration to these proxies. 
to basically tell them what they, are, what they need to do with the traffic uh, they receive. So a layer seven proxy uh, that manage all your uh, uh, traffic. This means a lot of functionality and this is really one of the main selling points of service meshes is that you can do a lot and you can offload capabilities or functionalities from the code. Uh, the most simple and common example is TLS. Uh, if you ask your developers to implement uh, TLS encryption between services, it's not, it's not an easy fit because they have to connect to PKI, they have to manage certificate rotations, certificate revocation, and so on. In service mesh, it's quite easy. It's one of the basic features. Uh, it relies on the, on the proxies, and basically, you say enable mutual TLS inside your mesh, true, push the config, and then boom. All the traffic inside your mesh is uh, TLS encrypted because all the proxies have a, a, a TLS certificate and they use that to encrypt the communication between uh, the proxies. So you can imagine there are, as I said, a lot of functionalities um, with service mesh. I divided uh, these uh, functionalities into four big categories or uh, domains. And what do you think these uh, uh, categories or domains are? You can shout out very loud, don't mind. Security, yeah? Sorry, observability, yeah? Metrics, yeah, observability. Discovery. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. So, uh, you basically uh, have most, uh, most of all. Um, first is, well, traffic management, uh, layer seven proxy, uh, watches all the traffic, so you can act on the headers, act on the requests, etc. cetera. Uh, security, of course, I was touching on that with uh, mutual TLS. So each uh, pod now has an identity. So you can do authentication, authorization, etc., filtering. Next is observability. Once again, a layer seven proxy. So you can watch all the traffic uh, that goes by, that goes through, sorry, and uh, extract a uh, number of requests, uh, extract uh, latencies, and so on. And the last one, I call it uh, topology. It is basically the ability to expand a mesh across Kubernetes clusters or across virtual machines or other workloads. And this way, a service in a cluster can communicate with uh, a service in another cluster completely transparently as if they were in the same cluster and the mesh handles uh, all the underlying things. So, next question for you. Uh, what do you think uh, the benefits uh, of all these functionalities are when using service mesh? Mm -hmm. Well, this is uh, the, 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 the benefits we found uh, during our first assessment. So it's basically based on the, the various uh, topics I was talking about earlier. First is simplify the developer experience by offloading some capabilities from the code. Uh, next is uh, better visibility, so observability inside the traffic. As I said, uh, in, a, in a basic uh, communities cluster, uh, networking is quite opaque uh, without any, uh, any additional tool. Secure communication between services, of course, uh, the security, uh, MTLS, uh, this is Service mesh is the way if you want to implement zero trust, for instance. And uh, functionally, it can ease multi-tenancies uh, with all that. So it, make, uh, it gives you more tool and more solutions to uh, easily collocate services in uh, bigger communities clusters. And well, pragmatically, it's, service mesh is one tool that packages a lot of functionalities. So it's one tool you have to ma maintain and it offers you a lot of possibilities. Of course, there are drawbacks uh, with service mesh. The main one is its uh, operational complexity. Um, as I said, another network layer, a lot of proxies uh, with each pod, and you have to manage that, operate that, 
uh, maintain, upgrade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it can be quite tricky. When it works, it works, and when it doesn't, well, you kind of lost. You maybe kind of lost. Statcar, a uh, cool feature that have the, uh, to, to have a proxy, but uh, well, it has uh, its own shortcomings. It consumes resources. Uh, it has latencies and ops uh, uh, in your traffic. Um, the last two ones are more linked to uh, the decathlon context. Uh, basically, service meshes uh, advertise uh, like one-click observability and dashboards. Well, this often implies uh, having other uh, monitoring tools like Prometheus, Jaeger, Zipkin, etc. And if you don't want to install them and manage them, then well, it takes it's more work to integrate maybe in your existing tooling or existing solutions. And last one is a functional because there is a new redundancy that appears between uh, the API management system, the API gateways, and the service mesh for NASA's traffic. Uh, because where do you implement your routing? Where do you implement your filtering? And you can even take into consideration the ingress if you have this additional ingress layer. So, Sidecar is uh, a big pain point uh, of service mesh, right? Consume a lot of resources. Uh, it has a lot of drawbacks and shortcomings. And service mesh uh, developers and service mesh solution, they, they thought about this and they came up with some solution in order to remove this, uh, this sidecar and ease uh, the uh, operation, the operation on, the, on the service mesh. And the idea is to replace one proxy with two proxies. So yeah, simplicity, right? Well, it's simpler anyway, but, uh, because uh, they are not at the same uh, level. And the idea is to have a layer four proxy that will handle all the layer four traffic, basically all the traffic of the mesh and apply layer four policies and an additional optional layer seven proxy that would handle all the layer seven policies uh, inside the mesh. And by using, by being uh, optional, uh, by, ma by making the layer seven proxy optional, you can basically have better f performances because you don't go through the uh, layer seven, additional layer seven proxy if you don't, your traffic uh, don't need it. There are currently two implementation uh, of this model. Uh, the first one is uh, Istio's ambient mesh. So in the ambient mesh, you have uh, layer four proxies uh, on each host that are called zero trust tunnel or Z tunnel. They basically establish tunnel between the hosts, so all the traffic uh, of the service page go through these uh, Z-tunnel proxies. And you have a layer seven proxies that are called waypoint proxies that are basically uh, uh, Envoy proxies. And the thing is that there is uh, one proxy, one, one waypoint proxy per identity, so per basically per uh, service count. And the idea is that if you have uh, a pod with a service account that wants to talk to uh, another pod with another service account, well, your traffic will go through uh, this waypoint proxy. And if you have another additional uh, layer seven policies, it will also go through this proxy. The other implementation is uh, Cilium service mesh. So once again, you have tunnel between the hosts. Um, these are uh, IPsec or WireGuard. And the, the layer layers four policies are handled by the Cilium CNI and eBPF. And for the layer seven policies, you have an Envoy proxy on each host. The main difference between Cilium and uh, Ambient Mesh is that uh, the layer seven proxy in Cilium is multi-tenant because there is only one per host. So it handles all the identities of the tenants. I also have to mention that uh, these implementations are quite new. Um, ambient Mesh is still experimental. It's going to beta soon. And I think Cilium Service Mesh is stable, but well, it's still quite new. But if you're looking at Service Mesh in a couple of months or maybe a year from now, you should have a look at that. It will not uh, ease your, your choice, but uh, well, more choice is good, right? Right, let's uh, go back to our study at Decathlon and uh, the conclusions. So 
So the, the goal of the study was really to assess if service mesh was the solution to our user needs. It was not to choose the best service mesh solution or choose the best implementation of service mesh. It was really to see if service mesh was good enough for us to use it every day and deploy it at scale. And how we conducted this study is quite, quite simply, actually. So we, we took the, the needs from our users, we translated them into scenarios or user stories, uh, whatever you call them. Some were required because they answered the needs of our customers and some were optional because a well, lot, lot of functionalities were service mesh, so opportunistically, uh, take some advantage uh, of this, uh, this additional uh, capabilities. This is an example of uh, one of these scenarios. So this is basically the scenario that says that we want service mesh to be able to be expanded between Kubernetes clusters to handle service to service communication between clusters for failover, et cetera, et cetera. We also took a hard look at the service mesh ecosystem. So the idea was to have uh, the broadest overview of the, the service mesh market. So we looked at open source solutions, we look at commercial solutions, we look at various implementations of service mesh, like the Cilium one. And the idea was to see how, um, how uh, each implementation or each kind of solution would uh, react, would be used with uh, these uh, various scenarios. So we took that, we went back to our users that express the, their, their needs and uh, their issues. And we told them, okay, we may have a solution uh, to what you're facing, but we need you to, to, step, to, test, to test it. And so the idea was to uh, test it uh, inside some of uh, our users' environment, uh, development environment, or environment uh, built on purpose, but with the, our users' applications, to see how the, the, the solutions would uh, actually answer and oh, we would operate them. So we took all the tests, we aggregated the data, we reviewed it, and we asked ourselves, well, is service mesh the solution? Do we need to put it everywhere? And before answering that question, I want to go back to our, our little friend, which is the uh, API gateway and API management system, because uh, when our users express these needs, our API management team, they didn't sit back and relax, they also heard them and they got to work and they came up with this. And this is, uh, let's say, a new design pattern of our API management system, of our API gateways. And the idea is to deploy an API gateway as close as possible to the user's workloads directly inside the Kubernetes clusters. And what's cool is that we, the users would use the same control plane, so same interface and APIs that they were using to configure the centralized uh, data and centralized gateways. And this way, this would alleviate the costs and the latencies that were uh, occurred by going through, uh, going out to the centralized uh, big gateways. So basically now we had two solutions, uh, which is pretty cool because sometimes you have none and well, it's not as easy. So if we, Take, the, take back the needs uh, I was talking about earlier. Can service mesh do multi-cluster? Yes, of course. It's one of the nice features of service mesh. Can API gateway, can the micro gateway, uh, and the, the nickname for, um, for this design pattern was, uh, is still micro gateway because, well, you take, um, uh, a gateway with a smaller configuration and only the configuration that is relevant to the context where it is deployed. So, uh, can micro, the micro gateway do multi-cluster? Yes-ish. Uh, because the idea here is that when a service requests another service, it just requests its uh, internal, let's say, or uh, neighbor uh, micro gateway and the micro gateway handles contacting the service may it uh, be external or in inside the same clusters. So all the, the management of reaching and 
uh, authenticating to the, the services is handled by the, uh, the micro gateway. So yes, ish. Can uh, service mesh do dynamic routing? Of course, layer seven proxies, etc. Can the API gateway do uh, uh, dynamic routing? Of course, uh, observability, uh, once again, uh, both, do, uh, both do it well. They use proxies, layer seven proxies after all. And last one, uh, east-west filtering. Of course, once again, uh, both do, both do it. So we basically have two solutions that answer our needs. One is uh, one new cool solution, one new cool tool, uh, which is service mesh that we'll have to deploy everywhere on the Kathleen. And one is the micro gateway, which is a nice new design pattern of a tool that we already know and use. So that's basically why service mesh is not the best solution. Actually, the, the, real, uh, the real answer is service mesh was not the best solution for Decathlon because we had another solution that was just taking something that already existed and uh, adapting it to uh, new needs and new usage. And even if service mesh was not the best solution for Decathlon, it may be a good solution for you because basically you have other needs, you have uh, other architectures in place, you have another kind of infrastructure. So you have to look into service mesh if you have needs around dynamic routing, zero trust, etc., etc., because it may be a good solution. But always go back to your user needs. That's, that's the main point of the talk, is to always go back to their user needs and not implement a complex solution just for the sake of it and because it looks cool because in the end you will have to maintain it, operate it, et cetera, et cetera. And that concludes my talk. Thank you. I guess we have time for questions. Oh, hi. Well, first, uh, congratulations for the for the talk. It, it's bold. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I was not expecting the final result. But um, usually, when you think about uh, putting something like service mesh, it's because you were also sometimes foreseeing something that you may use later. Uh, and in our case, for example, we use because we wanted to build a almost like a platform on top of service mesh and so on. So, when you, what what kind of consideration in the future of uh, uh, of of the Catalan, uh, you know, uh, uh, needs and so on, uh, took place in your decision in not to use? I mean, you 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 think as a something that is already established and you. Whatever you you have with the solution, yeah. it's okay. Uh, we took we took a look at what we could do with service mesh in the future, and that's what we had some optional scenarios that we want to test service mesh against. And in the end, we well we didn't deem the service mesh necessary even for those because they were not you know we wouldn't have to take this into account right now. So it will be maybe a few months from now, maybe a year from now. And well, in a year from now, a lot can, can happen and a lot will evolve in our ecosystem. So as there were no big, big priority uh, subject to, uh, to, to handle or tackle with service mesh, we said, well, let's for now just say, use the micro gateway and use service mesh for other needs, well, marginal needs. So we didn't forbid the use of service mesh. We said, yeah, first look at the uh, micro gateway pattern because it will answer 80, 90% of your needs. And then if you want to implement zero trust because you want to be ahead, well, use a service mesh solution. And we will use only, a, we'll select a service mesh solution for our decathlon and we'll go from there. And the idea is to revisit the needs 
in uh, one year, two years from now, and see if this decision still holds. Hi, um, thanks for the talk. Um, so you, you decided to choose basically to expand on your existing solution, which was the API gateway, but make it in the small units and have it, you know, aggregate them uh, at high level. How, so how far were you from still choosing service mesh, service mesh and like in what world, uh, what, in what event would you not have chosen to use your existing solution? What drove you to actually do, do that? Um, and was this choice difficult? Um, the way it went is that we basically did the study of, uh, about service mesh and our API management team. And they came in uh, at some point and said, hey, look, we have this new cool pattern and uh, we should test it. And basically our users went for it because well, it was easier for them to implement this new pattern because it was a tool they, are, they use every day and they have a lot of experience with it. And it was, in the end, uh, an easy decision to make because for service mesh, they would have to learn a new tool, which is a complex one. We would have to then uh, implement it at scale because well, we use one solution and we would deploy it, we would standardize it, automate it, uh, automate it, and it would take a lot of work for their teams and for our teams to implement it. And that's why, as I said, we went for the, uh, the uh, micro gateway pattern and said, go for that for one year, two years, and maybe revisit the decisions, see if users have new needs or if the, the pattern doesn't answer all their needs, and then we maybe uh, look at service mesh again and maybe implement it. Yeah, so basically it's because user adoption was natural that you went for it. Yeah, All right. exactly. Thank you. I, um, how did management react when you told them you spent all this time and money on service mesh research to, to <laughs> go back to the I have a manager solution? here, so I cannot answer that. <laughs> no, I, I have to answer those kind of questions. No, no. Um, well, basically the idea was um, it's, it's twofold. First is we did this study, we did it well. So the decision, we wouldn't go back to the decision in uh, two months from now because one, one user would say, hey, look, we learned this new service made it's cool. And no, it's a decision for one year or two years, maybe more. So it was good for them because there is a decision and we will come back to it. And the other is, well, it's just, the, the user needs are what's most important. So we took a couple of months to do a certain service mesh. It doesn't fit the needs. Well, we know, now we know more about service mesh and well, maybe we go back to it, but the, the most important things is uh, uh, look into your uh, user needs. Just the last one, thank you. Uh, last one. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, I had a feeling that uh, cross-zone traffic has never been a challenge for you because I thought you were not paying for that. But uh, saying goodbye to protocol, uh, layer seven protocol and using you know, layer four, did it help you to reduce the uh, traffic overhead? And do you have a figure on how much did you save the traffic, uh, but not using a layer seven protocol? Well, uh, we are using layer seven protocol actually because we are using the micro gateway. Micro gateway is an API gateway, so it's a layer seven. Okay. So um, there are actually, the, the savings are more on, you know, uh, egress traffic and inter-regional traffic mm -hmm. and it covers all the traffic. Uh, and the idea was to, um, a lot of uh, services are collocated on clusters and uh, even more will be. So we'll keep the traffic local to the cluster. And so we'll have on, on the, the bandwidth, on the, on the, the cloud cost of uh, going back and forth between the centralized uh, API gateway that are in other uh, GCP or AWS projects or other regions and, and so on. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I got one question, sorry. Um, in your test, well, at some point you look into sidecar-less uh, model, 
I'm in a model where we're using service mesh and we need layer seven uh, for our use case. Do you see any benefit in going to sidecar less model while still using all the like waypoints in Istio ambient? Or was it pointless in this case? Well, um, I talked about uh, the sidecar less approach because I wanted to uh, look a bit into the future. We didn't really uh, take into consideration uh, uh, sidecar less uh, solution into the study because we felt they were not mature enough. Um, the advantage I, I see anyway is that you still remove the uh, the sidecar uh, container and the sidecar container, the, which is a proxy uh, for service mesh, it's quite a hassle because you may have some ordering problems, you know, with init containers and so on, consumes a lot of resources. So even if in a sidecarless approach, if you don't, uh, if you always use uh, layer seven policies and they always go through uh, the layer seven proxies, you can um, save on an, on the operational cost anyway and on the 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 cost of uh, let's say the the Kubernetes clusters because there's less resource consumption and it's uh, simpler to maybe. Uh, debug because you have one um, one proxy per host or one proxy per namespace or service account. So it's a simpler approach even if you don't maybe gain much on the, the latencies and so on. Thanks everyone.